My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Video Game. It's Video Game. Estrella, by the way, is the video game. Six-sided oracles and dice. We're going to be playing as Sothis, the outcast prince. We're going to also turn it up to anomaly level number three. So we have stacking the effects of increased non-bosses max corruption, increased bosses max corruption, and enemy abilities are harder. And then we'll also upgrade Astraea's heart to level three out of a total of six, which means we can enter Astraea's heart, increased corrupted oracles and max, uh, sorry, and uh, Astraea's max corruption, and corrupted oracles and Astraea's abilities are harder. I'm quite deeply intimidated by this leap in difficulty, the three and three right here. But let's give it a go. I gotta do it sometime. Alrighty then. The Bahanian Hourglass is available for us. That is our base relic as Sothis, and it says at the start of each battle, gain five sands of time. All blessings that are triggered whenever you are a sentinel deal corruption to an enemy are also triggered when applying affliction. And Sands of Time itself says whenever you play a non-hex die, you have an X percent chance of not discarding the die, but instead rolling it. Then decrease Sands of Time by five. It has a minimum of 5% and a maximum of 50%. Affliction, just in case we're not super aware, uh, is creatures with affliction receive X corruption equal to their affliction at the end of their turn. Let's take a star telescope. Let's uh, it's been doing me quite well to play reasonably safe in the opening. I say reasonably so that I can start getting really aggressive later. Oh boy. Uh, Starfield Veil, vale. at the start of each battle, refresh your virtues. So we just have access to all of our virtues on turn one. Pretty good. Photon Glove, increase purification dealt by safe die and start a die by one, as well as the Dice Smith Helmet. If you have 30 dice in your dice pool, increase purification received by enemies by one. And for each five additional dice, do it again. I'm not entirely against the Dice Smith Helmet. It's just the fact that I don't really... Well, I guess the glass knives do purification. Hmm. Okay, like a big thick deck glass knife build with the Dice Smith Helmet, I could totally see being good. Do I want to actually start building towards that? Gosh, I think so. Let's start out with the Dice Smith helmet. I have to pick up 22 more dice before it's even theoretically a benefit for us. All right, Bahanian Hell. Gain one Sands of Time for each Soul Heat, all the way up to two Sands of Time for each Soul Heat. Hmm, one of them has the ability to also draw a die. I'm actually pretty happy for the Bahanian Hell. For what it's worth as well, Soul Heat is incremented every single time in my turn that I apply uh, Relief or Purification to a target from 0 up to a maximum of 10. Spread Essence requires we have the minimum Soul Heat of 8 to choose any target that has Relief and apply the same amount of Relief to that, sorry, that the target has to all other targets, then reset soul heat down to zero. Final here is Burning Sands. Apply an affliction to any target. Also, gain 15 burns of sa uh, Burning Sands. Burning Sands, sorry, Sands of Time. Um, I'm definitely going with the Bahamian Howl because it feels like while I can get 15 over here, and I can get a very small amount on the Bahanian Howl uh, of, of Sands of Time, typically. The Bahanian Howl, at its best, can also do the effect of the Burning Sands. And it's also worth noting, I'm building into a build that's going to have a reasonable amount of soul heat because I intend to build into Glass Daggers, and Glass Daggers do purification multiple times, therefore triggering soul heat multiple times as well. Purging Eruption, deal purification to an enemy X times, where X is the amount of affliction that enemy has. Mm, draw safe. Two sides that just draw a safe die. And pu uh, the Sonata of Healing. There's two sides that apply three relief to all targets. Relief, of course, at the end of the turn, at the end of their turn, rather, creatures with relief gain X purification equal to their relief, and then decrease relief by one. 
Affliction is not decreased, but it happens and triggers in the same way. I think I'll go with draw safe, and I think... Hmm. I feel like I need to take something every time I go to a location, basically. It's just how often am I really going to be afflicting the enemies? I'd really like to avoid it, if possible, actually. I'm going to go with draw safe. I actually will. I don't... I have one safe die in the entire deck so far, but I'll get more. Now, this enemy only provides me thorn damage when I provide purification directly to them, which I'm not going to do. I'm just going to put a bunch of relief on you instead. And then I'll do three damage to you with my soul heat and heal myself back to full HP at the end. Let's draw two safe die after I make sure I've played mine. So two instances of damage from the starter die, starter dagger rather. I have an even soul heat, so this would deal three corruption to any target, which I don't want to do. So I'll deal one purification to the enemy. And now I have an odd soul heat, so this is three purification to any target. Deal that straight to the enemy. I'll gain 10 cents of time for my trouble. And then... Wait, I can't draw two safe die. Oh, because I literally have my only safe die in hand. That makes sense. Great. So I managed to increase my sands of time all the way up to 27. And then at the end of my turn, I'm going to use my Virtue to heal myself. The Virtue, of course, is Scorching Sands deals one purification to any target for each Soul Heat. So my enemy is going to do another two damage directly to me, re-unlocking my extra Virtue. But also, one-fourth of the time, I'm going to be triggering a reroll instead of discarding a die. Like so. With an odd soul heat right now, I'll deal three purification to the enemy. And in fact, I'm going to take myself all the way up to a high amount of HP here. Before hitting the enemy with the Scorching Sands. At the end of the enemy's turn, they will trigger that relief and die. However, before they get there, they would also have healed themselves with their own actions, so they actually wouldn't have died. So I'll finish them on myself. Oh no! I do really, really want a chanting deck. This I don't think will be it. Uh, fiery Projection. Deal X Purification to the enemy, where X is half of your soul heat, rounded down. Multiplied by the amount of affliction you have. Yikes. Cleansing con uh, Conflagration, deal 5 damage to all targets for each affliction they have. Increase your soul heat by 1 for each character with affliction. And then spinning chanting. Deal chanting to all targets. Chanting says, deal 1 purification. Deals an additional purification for each chanting you have. Gain 1 chanting. If you deal purification not coming from chanting or a virtue, Lose all chanting. I don't want to do that. I'm going to turn that down. Oh my god, I got a glass daggers. Finally, the build's back online, baby. Cleansing Conflagration is here again. There's also Searing Ritual. Apply X relief to all enemies, where X is the amount of chanting you have plus one. Gain chanting. And then glass daggers. Two sides that have six damage to an enemy. Love it. I think I've got to take dice here. Choose up to two safe die. Hmm. 
I'm gonna do it. Soul stigma. Two sides of this also draw a die, but they also have two soul stigma. Soul stigma, whenever affliction. I don't want to do affliction. I'm going to have to just relent and start doing affliction at some point, right? Whenever affliction is applied, a random enemy receives X purification Y times, where Y is the amount of times that affliction was applied. At the start of your turn, decrease soul stigma by half. Ugh. There's also defensive boon. Apply light shield to all enemies, as well as possibly draw or deal purification. And then finally, the one I'm going to be taking. Sunny Flares. It has one side that draws a die, as well as applies one relief to a random target two times. And then the other sides are relief to targets or random relief to random targets. X amount of times, however, that is on the die. That, of course, is going to give us a large amount of Soul Flame. Hmm. Eclipse Blast isn't bad. As long as I manage when I use it each turn, I would just be able to get a pretty effective die here. However, it's also up against the Bahanian Howl, which I've already taken a copy of in the deck because I already intend to use it. Let's take another. I'm working towards my Dicemith Helmet. I'm actually extremely keen to see the Dicemith Helmet go off. I did just uh, put two extra safe die in the deck, so I can now just draw both of those. Draw one die, as well as apply a relief to a random target two times. Now I'll hit you for a damage and a light shield, a damage, a relief, and then get five sands of time, and then ten sands of time. Alright, already got a 1 in 5 chance to be uh, re-rolling instead. Oh wow, this enemy already has 2 Agony. So that's this enemy's modification for the sake of enemy abilities are harder. They have an extra Agony making them a lot faster at scaling. Uh, let's re-roll the enemy because they've got their worst side as well as myself because I have mine. <laughs> I'm back to my worst side. <laughs> Yikes. I'm gonna deal three to myself, and then one of the enemy activating odd soul heat. And at the end of all of this, there we are. The enemy should ultimately unlock a virtue for me, leaving me on a little bit of cor a little bit of purification left in my big corruption bar down there. Six glass knife directly to the enemy. One more to make the virtue odd. Three damage direct to them as well. I'm gonna re-roll. Yep, the enemy as well as my own die there. Ooh, draw two, save, die. Love that. Oh, that's so good. Number one, actually, I, uh, let me heal myself. Triggering sense of time, hell yeah. Heal myself again. Now I'm up to 10 sense of time. Before I use anything, though, I'm going to give myself... Sorry, five cents of time, ten cents of time equal to my soul heat, and then two cents of time from each soul heat to get me up to a total of 35. And then at the very end of my turn, I'll just kill the enemy. I just wanted to get the sense of time! Hi! It was good number! Oh, wow, another Bahamian Howl. I'm legitimately, I'm pretty keen to keep taking them because I am thickening the deck out. They're not gonna be too dense in the deck. Shield Boomerang for applying Light Shield to any target. If played, it's returned to the draw pile. Instead, two relief to any target for each soul heat. That is very good, but I can't take too many things that have an unignorable affliction I have to apply.
I'm gonna take the Bahangian Hell again. Ooh, Desert Projection, what's this? Minimum Soul Heat 10 causes this to apply a uh, full Light Shield to all targets. Hey. Minimum Soul Heat of 5 causes this to apply one Light Shield to all targets. Hmm. Minimum Soul Heat of 0 apply three reinforced to all targets. Reinforced blocks all purification, then decreases reinforced by one. So effectively, do I always have more than five soul heat? Almost all of the time, yes. I'm gonna take the desert projection because it'll be really good later. There's a searing ritual and fiery projection. We've seen those earlier. Enemy chanting, dealing chanting to an enemy. Interesting. Hmm. Let's go random event or ambush. Oh, it's just a star telescope. I'll absolutely take a star blessing. <laughs> the start of the battle gain infinity disoriented. Purifying corrupt actions, not that I have that many of those, uh, have the value randomized between 1 and 6. Ghostly Lamb, whenever you deal corruption or apply affliction, increase your soul heat by 1. Eh. Oh, Singing Urn. Huh. Strange. Whenever you would lose all chanting, all enemies receive 2 purification for each chanting you have. Pretty powerful. I guess I'm taking the ghostly lamp just to guarantee that I'm more likely to hit my soul heat limit. Not enthused about it, but I did do it. And I'll gain star shards over a sentinel there. Oh, hell yes. Okay, deal one to an enemy six times. And then... Again, and then a little relief at the end. And now I have nine soul heat, and I get to use Bahanian Hell, getting nine cents of time and drawing a die. I didn't want that one. Can I not draw that instead? I have to play it, so I'm just going to corrupt and heal all of my enemies? Oh, sick. It did reroll, actually getting me to draw two safe die. Hell yeah. Okay, it got, it got better again near the end. I re-roll one relief into one relief. Gain 20 cents of time, and then try and stack some additional relief. I'm also going to hit that target for 10 with my virtue and end my turn. Oh boy. A lot of over-corruption happening there with the enemies. Oh, and I'm really not rolling the best sides I have access to. I'm gonna reveal two of the enemies die here. Yeah, because that's pretty much exactly what I was scared of. They're absolutely on their way to murdering me. So I can get four from my virtue of sand. So I can do four damage, three damage, four damage. So I'm just short of being able to take out the sheltered Osteron. I don't know if I can survive if I don't, though. Maybe I should have counted on the possible reroll. Okay, 
Okay, I can get the enemy dead. And then relief triggers at the end of the turn, getting me back to full HP. Which matters, because without that full HP, I would have died. Or lost a heart. Oof. Hilarious. Well, I gained some sands of time, and I really need more. Quite desperately. I heal myself. Nice. I do get the reroll. So the minimum here, I want to have five. That's going to be difficult. No, wait, I can get to five. Hey, even without that trigger. But now I can apply online shield to all targets, which also applies to the enemies. That's very important. I should have played my Sands of Time trigger first, as well as my Virtue first. Unfortunately, I did not. I will reroll the enemies just so I know what they're doing, not that I could do anything about it. Should have done that earlier. Second enemy overcorrupts themselves, applying one doom to both of the remaining enemies, making them even more potent. Okay, I'm fine with this. One relief to any target two times. One purification, one purification. Now a gain four sands of time as well as draw a die. I see. How's that? An area corrupt that I can't not play. That triggers the enemies over corruption. They're gonna over corrupt again. I'm gonna have four damage dealt. I'm technically still alive. Oh gosh, I I had five damage virtue I should have played. I'm over concerned about the fact that these enemies are now getting ridiculous doom values and it's not playing into my hand. Also, I don't really seem to have damage in my deck. Which I just think might be an issue. That enemy wants to do eight corruption directly to themselves. That's so much self-healing. It's not even really worth hitting them because they might just self-heal all of it. I'm up to the 50 sands of time. Hell yeah. Why? Corrupt that enemy by three just because I can, without killing myself at least. Okay, I'm all the way back on full HP. now have 10 Doom and... Sorry, 11 Doom and 3 Doom, respectively. And I still don't really have damage in this deck at all. I, I have... tiny instances of kind of trying to do damage-ish. I really thought that just getting enough value out of my Sands of Time was going to be enough. It's absolutely not. It's patently not. I'm going to be dying as a result of this. The sense of time forced me to have to play the reinforced again. One target takes me out. For what it's worth, I still can't do anything to them. I'm probably just going to continue dying. I can't even heal myself. I've got six stacks of purification. <laughs> This was such a good setup for a run that can't do anything. 
I just wanted to do a glass knives build. That's all I want. Oh my god. They're still buffing? Just kill me! <laughs> I, I was, if there was a restart button there, I was just gonna immediately hit that, but I will just, wait a moment. Demonstrate a second's worth of patience. Now, finish it. Numerically, especially because the enemies just full heal themselves anytime they self-target, and they self-target most of the time, and I can't do 31 damage in a single turn. Yeah, it was time. You got corrupted, bud. Hey, I mean, it's enough to unlock another level for the character, the absolute least. You've reached Sothis' level 3. Oh, it has created two more chanting actions. Okay. Wicked chanting, dealing chanting to any target, gain X additional chanting for each affliction the target has. And then blazing chanting, deal chanting to any target, apply X affliction to the same target, draw a die. And then finally the black hole blessing of replace your virtues with enemy chanting instead. All right, let's try and do a chanting build. That's what I want. That's all I've ever wanted. Come on! Reasonable star blessing. Well, I mean, whenever you deal corruption or affliction, increase your soul heat by one. Every eight safe time you play, refresh your virtues or refresh your virtues at the start of each battle. I kind of refresh my virtues at the start of each battle. Just immediately have 10 sands of time. Whenever you deal corruption or apply affliction, increase your soul heat by one. I just don't think ghostly lamp is gonna be essential here. I guess it could be, obviously. I don't know any of the upcoming dice. But I really wanna do chanting. So if the game gives me an option, and it does deal chanting to all targets, I'm gonna take it. So chanting, for clarity's sake, chanting says deal one purification. Deals an additional purification for each chanting you have. After that, gain a chanting. If you deal any purification not coming from chanting or from a virtue, you then lose all chanting. So effectively, we only use against our enemies. Oh, if you deal purification. Never mind. We only use chanting and relief. Because we can't deal purification. No, wait, but if you deal purification, not coming from chanting or virtue. Right. But does relief. I don't deal purification to a target. They take purification from relief. So I can still use relief. Let's take spinning chanting. And then there's just one die that says chanting on every side, deal chanting to every target. There's a cleansing conflagration as well. Purification for each affliction the target has. Shamanic whispering. Some void seek as well as applying affliction to any target. But no, this is a chanting build. So just to make sure that I'm doing this right, 
I'm going to apply chanting to the enemy. Deal chanting to any target. <laughs> it forces me to do it again. I do so. It forces me to do it again. Okay, so because I've done it a couple times before, now, because I have two chanting on my main character, I deal chanting 20 target. One purification and one additional purification for each chanting I have. And then at the end of this, just to guarantee that I'm correct about the function of things, I'm going to use a relief on the enemy and then I'm going to hit them with a virtue. The relief deals damage to the or purification of the enemy at the end of that turn. I don't lose my chanting in response. So I was reasonably certain to be correct about the way it worked previously. Uh, one relief to the enemy target there. Sense of time returns it to my hand. Uh, Reroll for chanting. Deal chanting to all targets, including myself. I'm going to heal up and then deal chanting to all targets. And finish the enemy off with the Scorching Sands. Blech. None of these say chanting. I mean, there's relief. Relief's not that bad. Obviously, it's another thing that I can play in between my chants. Gain of Serenity increases Purification received by X. I... I don't want to skip. But I also really want to skip. I'm gonna skip. Spinning chanting. Yep. Hmm. It's theoretically possible that by the time I get to that forge shop, I would have the ability to forge and duplicate. And forging and duplicating, honestly, literally just straight up duplicating the chanting. Actually, what if I just double duped the chanting? What if that's all I did? I think that's actually a sick move. I'm going to do it. So I take 50 star shards, and from the end of this fight, I will take 50 star shards. I don't know if I'm getting any from the ambush, so I have to do this, I think, because the first duplication is 100, the second duplication is 150 on the first floor, if I recall correctly. Let's re-roll... Two of mine. Nah, I didn't get the good sides. I gotta kill this enemy basically as quick as I can. Look at his split. I'm gonna deal two to myself. And re-roll both of my reliefs, hoping to get twos on them. I just get ones on both again. It's fine. I'm gonna be dealt two damage uh, by the enemy at the end of this turn, which will re-unlock my second virtue there for us. Wow. Fine, I'll re-roll those. Ooh! Reroll from the worst side on the minor shield to the best side on the minor shield for both of them. Uh, I haven't dealt any chanting to any targets yet, I don't believe, right? So... Let's heal myself. Damage the enemy. And... Then it's time to start chanting. Gee, howdy, that's a lot of doom.
Let's take the reroll. See if I can get the AoE chanting here. I cannot. I'm gonna have to do one corruption to everyone. Oh, that that's not good. Unfortunately, I re-rolled that. I'm going to deal chanting to myself, giving me an odd value for the sake of my virtue. And I have to throw two on the enemy, unfortunately there. I'm about to lose all chanting if I didn't. Yeah, it's going to get really hard to survive the enemy this turn. Especially if I can only roll the worst side. Got some more shielding at least. I think I have to get rid of my chanting because I definitely can't. I can't live. Oh boy. Ugh. Two dual targets, the enemy over corrupts and takes me out. And I set them up with as much damage as I have. I don't... I didn't... <laughs> I'm not proud of that, son. A little bit mind flooded, certain. Defensive boon. Light shield for all enemies. There's a quick strike there as well. Siphon hourglass. Gain two sands of time for each creature with relief or affliction. If a creature has both, gain eight. And quick strike. Purification to any target, draw die. I can't take this this many negatives. I'll skip. Eclipse blast. Concentration. Start of your turn, increase your whole heat like that. Nope. Astral calling again. Nope. Turn them all down. Let's go to the ambush. Gain four random non skippable die with 10% chance of being an epic. So from that, we gain two copies of Sunny Flares, applying relief to any target. We've got Meditate as well as Safe, providing purification to ourselves, and Inner Warmth. Your soul heat doesn't re he uh, reset to zero for X turns. Not awful. Only one of them actually deals purification, so only one of them's really a problem for the chanting build. And I will dupe the chanting side twice. If anything can right the ship, that's it. Let me reroll my two severe negatives. Cool. Still gonna be corrupting all enemies. Um deal corruption to myself to re-unlock the re-roll of that because it's pretty dire well now it's only one to all of them still bad one relief to each of the enemies what a relief I'd hate to have it stack up on one person usefully Apply two corruption to all enemies. I'm going to take three damage at the end of this turn. 
re-unlocking the Sense of Time Virtue. I'm gonna gain two in a warmth before I use my Sands of Time because I don't want to reroll that die if I can avoid it. I'm gonna heal myself and light shield myself by one, then heal myself by another three using the Soul Heat. Okay, as for rerolls, it's only reasonable to try and reroll the enemies. That's three AoE in corruption. I don't think I can kill this enemy. I'm gonna try, but I think I just am not taking enough actual damage for this deck to do anything right now. And I'm over, uh, over trusting the base deck. And, you know, heavily, uh, heavily focusing on a very narrow strategy to try and do enough for us. These enemies just to provide doom to everyone. That one does four AoE, so that's enough to trigger its own overcorruption, as well as the overcorruption of the one previous to it, as well as healing everyone on the field. And that's another two in AoE, causing you to overcorrupt yourself, giving one doom to everyone on the field, meaning that basically if anyone takes an AoE action at any point, I can't kill anyone. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, things are going wrong. I'd like if this weren't how it were going, but it is. Provide a relief to a target, woohoo, I can do chanting to all targets. That's impactful, that includes myself. Oh my god, I got the same side again, do it again. Oh my god, legitimately. This is basically what would have been entirely required for me to even have a chance, and then it just happened. Alright. I took one of the enemies down, and now I have a big stack of chanting. Oh, never mind. They did seven in AoE, so I'm gonna immediately die. Okay, this shells battle is really difficult for this character. I guess I have to already have an engine going if I intend to face this enemy. The fact that enemies overcorrupt themselves, not only to trigger an action, but also to self-heal, and that they can trigger in that an action that allows them to increase their own corruption application, leads to this spiral where if you aren't ahead of the enemy's speed, at some point, they will definitely be ahead of yours in a way that you cannot overcome. So how do you avoid that? You can either only go into those battles when you know that you have the velocity to overcome the enemies. Noting here that the third level of Anomaly and the third level of Astraea uh, has dramatically increased the velocity at which I need to be in order to overcome those enemies. Or I can take easier fights and more generalized dice early rather than trying to go down a single strategy and then utilize that the entire time. So I suspect that second is especially going to be something I have to focus on going into the future. For the moment, though. What, 44 minutes. Do you think it was win? Do you think it was Southern speedrun win? I, I wished it was. Alas, it weren't. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. A uh, special thanks this episode to Sorothil for supporting the Republic over on Patreon.com slash Absolute Plays. I don't bother to thank you. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.